I'm Mercy and welcome to the one place where we try to address all your science related queries. It's the one stop science shop. Let's see who we can help today. It's Maria from Poland. Her question is, how do whales and sea animals stay warm in extreme cold climates? Good question Maria. To answer that, we need to have a look at what happens beneath the freezing water. Here's a great experiment that can help answer our question about how sea animals stay warm in extremely cold temperatures. For this, you need a tub of fat shortening, ice cubes, lots of it, a ball of water, tape, scissors, cutters, two Ziploc bags in different sizes, one slightly bigger and one slightly smaller. First of all, I'm going to take five scoops of fat shortening into my big Ziploc bag. Put the smaller Ziploc bag carefully into the bigger Ziploc bag. Now pull the smaller Ziploc bag a little out. Then using a cutter, snip off the end. So I fold back the top part of the smaller Ziploc onto the bigger Ziploc bag like this. I'm taping both edges securely. Now we're going to use a black tape and tape the bag. All the edges of our bag are securely taped up. I'm going to put my hand in a smaller bag and carefully flatten the fat shortening so that it forms a thin layer between the two plastic bags. Make sure it's evenly spread out. The more fat shortening you use, the more insulation we create in the bag. Our blubber guff is now ready. I'm now going to test my hand in this tub of cold water. It's cold. I'm now going to put my hand inside the blubber glove and put it in the ice water and see how long I can take it. Here we go. It feels pretty normal. Astoundingly, the temperature inside the blubber glove remains fairly constant and close to room temperature. So what is the secret of my glove? The blubber glove insulates my hand from the cold and changes the water pressure felt on it. The fat molecules in the fat shortening make it act like blubber. In the case of sea animals like whales, they have a thick layer of blubber or fat under the skin. Blubber helps keep these animals warm because it acts as an insulator. An insulator slows down the transfer of heat, keeping the animal's body heat from escaping into the water and protecting it from the cold. This layer helps the sea animals spend their entire lives in bitterly cold temperatures. To make your own blubber gloves at home, here's what you need. A container of ice water, fat shortening, two Ziploc bags, strong black tape, hand towel. I guess that's why we never get to see a whale with a cold at the doctor's. But I can see someone's on the way to visit us. Let's find out who's visiting us today. Wow, I love this place. Hello there, come on in. Hello. Welcome to the One Stop Science Shop. My name is Mercy, what's yours? My name is Muna. So what brings you here to the One Stop Science Shop? I'm interested in the science of environment and I want to know how can we conserve our planet. Nowadays, topics like global warming are such big science stories. But people were not always interested in studying the impact of human development on the environment. But here is a scientist who will tell us a lot more. You know what to do? Yes, I do. Great. This is Rachel Louise Carson, a highly influential American marine biologist, writer and nature conservationist whose work advanced the cause of global environmentalism. She was born in May 1907 on a small family farm in Pennsylvania in the United States and grew up a devoted nature lover. 
Carson initially wanted to become a writer and published her first story at the age of 11, but inspired by her biology teacher, went on to study biology and then zoology at university. I think I said zoology, thank you. She worked for many years at the US Fish and Wildlife Service as a marine biologist, until in 1952, she published The Sea Around Us to great acclaim and it stayed on the bestseller list for over 80 weeks. She then dedicated herself to writing. Carson spent the four years between 1958 and 1962 gathering research into the effects of DDT. During World War II, government research had developed synthetic pesticides to kill pests such as insects, weeds, and small crop destroying animals. After the war, farmers began to spray these pesticides in huge quantities on their crops. One of the main ones was called DDT. Carson's research showed that these pesticides were adversely affecting the environment and making people sick. Her book on the subject published in 1962 was called Silent Spring in reference to the silence of the spring birds dying due to pesticides. Silent Spring condemned the indiscriminate use of pesticides, especially DDT and led to a global environment consciousness movement. At first, Silent Spring met with fierce opposition by chemical companies, but it became popular and brought the environmental issues of pesticides and fertilizers to the general public. DDT was eventually banned in the United States in 1972 and internationally in 2004. In April 1964, Rachel died from cancer in her home in Maryland. In 1980, her name was honored with a Presidential Medal of Freedom for her work. Rachel Carson is directly responsible for what we eat, or should we say, the chemicals we no longer eat in food today. A true heroine of environmental science. Well, that's a brilliant example of a meaningful life. My class teacher emphasizes by asking us to plant one tree every month. Only plants can help cool down our planet by absorbing greenhouse gas carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. What exactly are greenhouse gases? Greenhouse gases are certain gases in the atmosphere that trap energy from the sun. For example, water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and methane. Without these gases, heat would escape back into space and the Earth's average temperature would be about 60 degrees Fahrenheit colder. So they warm our world. Exactly. Do you want to see how it works? Yes, please. Let's find out what I got in my one-stop science box. All right. We have two bottles. Right, two bottles with corks. Two thermometers. Right, two thermometers. And then we have this. What is this? This is some vinegar. Now we have some baking soda. We have measuring spoons. We have a funnel, a beaker, some tissues, and two sun lamps. Now let me remove this box and we'll get started. What are we doing here today, Mercy? I'm going to show you the greenhouse effect. So first of all, we're going to take our two thermometers and keep them out for about three minutes so they'll show us the accurate room temperature. Miana, can you look at the thermometer and tell me what's the temperature today? 20, 21, 22, 25. It's 25. Now we're going to put one thermometer in one of the bottles. There's a hole in the bottle. Yes, I made a hole in the cork so that the thermometer can pass through easily. In the second bottle, add two tablespoons of baking soda. Two. And 60 ml of vinegar. We have to do the next step very quickly and pour this in carefully. To cover it up. I can see bubbles. We have to seal this quickly so that no carbon dioxide escapes. The reaction between vinegar and baking soda results in the production of carbon dioxide. I'm gonna take the two sun lamps and place them about four inches away from each bottle. Why do we use sun lamps? To heat up our bubbles just like the sun hits the earth. Can someone please turn off the lights and the lamps on please? Wow they actually look like the sun. It's getting hot here. It is indeed. We've kept the two bottles in front of the sun lamps for about five minutes. 
What do you notice looking at the thermometers? This one is 35, this one is 28. So the bottle with carbon dioxide is showing a higher temperature as compared to the one with just air. But why is that, Mercy? Even air have carbon dioxide. Before I answer your question, let's turn off the sun lamps. The air in the bottles cannot circulate to the rest of the room. It stays in the bottle and under the light of the lamp, it gets warmer and warmer. The bottle with the carbon dioxide traps even more heat and warms up even faster than the room air, which contains only a trace amount of carbon dioxide. A similar trapping of heat happens in the Earth's atmosphere. Sunlight passes through the atmosphere and warms the Earth's surface. Greenhouse gases trap the heat radiating out from the surface of the planet, and this process is called the greenhouse effect. So the greenhouse effect makes the earth warmer. The greenhouse gases trap the heat of the sun. You got it right there. To try this for yourself at home, have a look at what you need. Two thermometers, two two-liter bottles, two sun lamps, vinegar, baking soda. Without the greenhouse effect, the earth would be too cold for humans to survive. Now I want to start a Mother Earth Club. The world needs more Rachel Carsons and people like you. From the freezing temperatures of the cold oceans to greenhouse effects, we have covered a lot of ground today. Thanks for joining us. I hope to see you again as we try and answer many of your science-related questions at the one and only One Stop Science Shop. Hãy subscribe